All right, welcome to yet another fabulous Sunday night news and nonsense. Total OS today and I, Spatry. Well, we, we've got some snippets of news that uh, we'd like to share with you and who knows, maybe some comic relief here and there. Of course, everybody knows that I'm the innocent victim and Total OS today is the aggressor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, folks. Um, <laughs> or are we going to reverse that? <laughs> I think it's the reverse. Yes, this is the new Sinner Report for Sunday night, of course. And, uh, of course, my wonderful, terrific... Perfect gentleman, Citizen Spatry, is joining me, Toss, today on the new Cinder Report. Hi, Spatry. Hey, what's up, man? Uh, I got some new cool, cool news for us to talk about. Are you ready? Yeah, I am, and I got a few little news clips for you, too. So. Okay, I guess I can go first. Please, please, me, me, me. Can I, can, I, can I go first? Me, 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 me. Okay. Yes, you may. Thank you. Um, the new, Some of the new Android phones coming out, like the Galaxy phones, which which really look cool, they have a new feature, facial recognition, which means you can take, I guess, a photograph of yourself and lock your phone based on your face. So instead of typing, say, like a four-digit code, right, you can use your face. Mm -hmm. Now, my question is, what if you go out one night, get plastered, and get into a bar fight, and your nose is broken, <laughs> bloody lip, and you're, and you're trying to call 911, and you're screaming at your phone, it's me, I swear, it's me, I just have a bloody lip. It's... Right. Well, I, I, it stands to reason, yes, they have the facial recognition and that sort of thing, but um, what I imagine is going to happen is there's probably going to be a secondary way to unlock the phone, such as, you know, doing a little finger swipe or something like that, because uh, obviously... Obviously, you know, um, in the middle of the night when it's dark or something like that, and the phone's ringing, and you've got to put it up to your face. That means you got to turn on your lights in your bedroom, yes. wake up the wife, yes. you know, and all this for it to recognize your face. Yes. You know, so I think I think while that is a good idea, maybe we should just have the thing do a complete retinal scan. Now, obviously, a bar fight isn't going to change. Right, right. <laughs> Not unless you get, not unless you know you get hit by some really skillful thugs that have a way of rearranging your. Yeah, retina. like maybe two <laughs> kung fu masters or something. Yeah, but, yeah. Exactly. But, uh, yeah, but yeah, I think I'll just stick with my four-digit code. You know, four digits or yeah, I think that'll work. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, I just, I you know, I just do this funny little pattern pattern and unlocks my Android. Oh yeah, and that too. Yeah. Sounds yeah, but, you know, but the thing is, you know, and it's really funny because uh, because um, well, by the time this airs, uh, the next uh, my next episode will be out already on the Zoo Crew because we're talking about life of product. We'll be talking about life of product. I mean, you know, how long do some of these you know cameras and these devices actually last? I mean, yeah. If, lucky on most mobile phones that you buy nowadays. You know, you're lucky if you can get them working. For about three years before you get a new one. I mean, at and at, at the level they're priced, they're practically disposable anyway. Well, that's why you sign what a two-year contract, and that's it, and move on. So. Yeah, and then at the end of your contract, you get a new phone. Yes, Pretty which fun. I guess makes sense. Sure. Yeah. Yep. So. Okay. Sounds right. good. What here's do you some, have, Spatry? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Here's something in the news. Now, uh, all of you have seen that I've done a review on the uh, 2012.05 release. Of Archbang, but something that I wasn't aware of until I was uh, surfing around on Linux today is that this is actually being released quarterly. So Archbang's year is four times a year, and everybody knows. Yeah, everybody knows in the Linux world that uh, a year in Linux is six months. Well, not for Archbang. They're going to be releasing this quarterly. Interesting. So is that in cat years or dog years, or is it the reverse, or some like that? You know? uh, well, for every for every um, for every uh, human year, that's yeah. uh, seven years in a uh, dog or cat's life. Oh, so this is like the opposite of that, or something. So, so, so we're so yeah, we're two and a quarter. Yeah, two, okay. so uh, in, a, in a dog's life, that is one and one quarter. Year. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> sure, whatever you say, Doc. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, uh, yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah, okay. seven. Uh, Oh gosh, you're asking me to Chance, do math this just hour. Go, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's your next item? Uh, 
Oh, the Microsoft news that we had on the last Zoo Crew. Uh, oh, Microsoft, yes. Microsoft was, let's see, banned in Germany, right? Yes. Okay, now, here's the thing. Would it have made news if it said Microsoft banned in Bangladesh? Or Tahiti? <laughs> <laughs> Would it have made any there? Now, of course, Germany is a big market, but really, what's the biggest news? That it was banned or banned – well, the fact that it was banned in Germany or maybe both. I mean the fact that Microsoft is banned somewhere, period, right? Okay. Let's, let's look at the picture a different way. Yes. Everybody knows that the safest – way to travel nowadays is air travel okay the only reason why it makes big news is you know when a plane goes down because you know yes because when you think about how many times a day right. I mean, every second of every day somewhere on this planet somebody's crashing their vehicle okay okay and obviously that's not happening with airplanes yes. how often do we have do we hear in the news about an airplane going down so it makes big news okay so I, and of course with uh, with uh, with the monopoly Microsoft you know um, obviously you know uh, they're the well they're the biggest company out there in terms of uh, software one of okay. the biggest, okay way. sure they've got a monopoly I mean they're on everybody's computers and that sort of thing so yeah I mean, if they were, I mean, if they were going to, uh, you know, um, if they were going to get banned in um, butt fart Egypt, I'm sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah. Just the fact that they're getting banned in one little country, but, but yeah, because it did hit Germany. Obviously, uh, I'm wondering if other countries are going to follow suit on this, especially since Microsoft couldn't get its patent laws and everything passed in European mm -hmm. countries. Right, right. And we know this has been going on for over a decade now, or at yeah. least close to it. You know? yeah. yeah. It's been a long time that they've been trying to fight for these and that sort of thing. So yeah. um, I, think it, I think it still would have made some kind of news. Yes. Okay. Well, what do you have next? Okay, well, right along that same vein, I was looking at Linux Insider today and uh, an article titled Ubuntu Linux 1204, Microsoft's Worst Nightmare. Oh. The article goes to say, well, there's a new kid in town in the Linux blogosphere, and it's already caused quite a stir. It's one of, it's one of the Ubuntu clan, and its nickname makes clear, precise pangolin. Yes. But that's as far as the fooling goes. With five years of support, yes, a scaly tough hide, this one's here to stay. With time on its side and its eye on the prize, uh. it may just blaze a new trail. Mm, okay. Wow! And, yeah. yeah, and pretty much, uh, and pretty much now uh, the, the article is quite a bit longer. But the thing is. Uh, I just couldn't believe all the responses that this article has received. Uh, you know, yes, there are a lot of choices. A, a number of people don't really care for uh, the Unity interface and that sort of thing. But uh, yeah. as the author of this article went on to say, that they found very few articles that is saying that this release is a bad release. As a matter okay. of fact, that, that what they're seeing is, and even from, from reviewers like myself, I even gave the new Ubuntu a, uh, a positive score because the thing is they've actually improved the user interface. And, I like it, yeah. Yep. Yeah, and it's a lot better. Yes. And, and they're saying that this potentially could be a real contender to Windows 8. Now, a lot of people are speculating that the Windows 8, obviously, is um, going to be another flop, another Vista. And I can remember when Vista came out, uh, I can't use the name that I wanted to call it, but um, something to do with horse stable and just <laughs> put together one word. Yeah. You know, um, I actually tried uh, Ubuntu, uh, I think it was called Hardy Heron or Jaunty Jackalope, one of those. I can't remember. Way back when, yeah. Yeah, when Vista came out. Yeah. And um, I would have stayed with it if I could have got the comp. His, actually, it was Barrel at the time. It was Barrel Effects. If I could... But the thing is, I couldn't get my graphics driver working. But then when I decided to try uh, Linux again uh, last year, 
everything worked right out of the box, and I'm like, okay, Linux has won me now. Cool. You know, because, you know, yeah, that's one thing. I like the eye candy. I, I, you know, I like the special effects, but really I'm not even using that many effects now because okay. I just use it more for a pro- for productivity reasons, you know, yeah. I, yeah. I have all my desktops, I can move my windows around real easily, I can do this and that and this and that, so. You like your little toys. I, okay. Exactly, exactly. Cool. Yeah, I'm Wonderful. So, well, I, I like 1204, I think I called it pretty precise, polished, it's, look, I, look, Windows Vista was horse stable. Windows 7, completely stable, stellar, they, they got it right. Windows 8, I will wait to the final product, but as far as 12.04, for me, it's been stable, it's polished, it's definitely, at the very least, a possible alternative to Windows if you're looking for something different, so definitely give it a try. But get this, though, I was, interestingly enough, I was reading an article not too long ago that there are people out there that still love Windows XP and will refuse to, to, to get out of it. You know, and most yeah. software that you buy nowadays will still run on it. So, Not literally, a, uh, yeah. Well, I don't yeah, see a problem it, with that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I mean, you know, um, this is, you know, Windows XP has actually had a longer life than Microsoft could have even anticipated. And like it or not, I'll give it credit. Still, yeah. You know, they, they still have to support it because what about the netbooks that you bought yes. last year that yes. had Windows XP on them? It's great for older hard for your older hardware. Why not? Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So you know they're going to have to provide support for it for a little bit longer. At least a few more years, I would imagine. But uh, yeah, I mean, if if you have like like you said, a netbook or older computer with say old five twelve RAM, you know, megabytes or even two fifty six, it'll run it not blazing, but it'll run. I'll, I'll give them credit. But yeah. Actually, I had uh, the first edition of XP running on a uh, 233 megahertz with 64 megs of uh, yeah, wow. uh, cool. 233 megahertz with 64 megs of RAM. That was their minimum system requirement. Yes, um, that sounds that about time. right. Yes. And uh, yeah, it was really slow. You had a you know you really had to go to the classic interface and that sort of thing. And well, the RAM really 64. I, I would not recommend that. No, no, mm-hmm. no. But you know, I tried it just for just for laughs and giggles, and uh, yeah. Okay, okay. so uh, all right. Tell tell me what, what's this dinosaur thing you're talking about? Oh my goodness! Do you know what this? Um, I'm I'm trying to keep a straight face here, and I will try, folks. If you are listening to this for the very first time, this this podcast between me and my good buddy Spatchery, this is basically a all technology show, not just you know Linux, Windows. We try to cover all technology. Well, I own Linux. You do the rest of the. Tech. Okay, I'll do the rest. I'll do the. I'll do the. I'll do the dirty work. Pardon the pun. Once I say this other news story. News story. Oh gosh. Here it comes. And I. And I'm very. It, this is hard for you to keep a straight face. Face, folks. But here we go. Apparently, research researchers in London. I guess using computer models. You know the extension of the dinosaurs. Right. Uh-huh. Of course, it happened what 65 million years ago, and and it was more than likely like a meteorite or meteoroid or asteroid striking uh-huh. the Earth and causing a cataclysmic global, you know. Okay. Uh-huh. Well, <laughs> they now believe that that did not happen. They believe that oh. the dinosaurs did it to themselves. You want to know how? How? According to their computer models, I'm assuming using Linux or something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what they use, but according to their model, according to their research, research. Okay, you ready? They gassed themselves to death. They <laughs> they farted themselves to extinction. <laughs> now I could I could see I could I could see you know a big oh. food chain going on here. I could see them eating each other, but. Farting themselves to death? Oh, come on. You do a, a search, <laughs> dinosaurs farting. They apparently, according to their models, whatever, dinosaurs <laughs> expelled like millions, like hundreds of millions of tons of, I guess, methane. methane. <laughs> whereas a cows do like here on Earth, like 50 or something like that. And they think with all this 
Well, with all this farting, they just... They asphyxiated themselves to death? (laughs) They gassed themselves to death. (laughs) And I'm like, are you farting me? Are you bleeping? Are you kidding me? But, uh... I hate... I hate... No pun intended here, uh, Total Loss today, but that is one crappy story. Uh, Yes, (laughs) that's an appropriate, uh, by headline, uh, sub-headline. I mean, I mean, I mean, so, of course, this begs the question, could this happen to us? <laughs> oh, I mean, if you wanted to take over, say, if you wanted to, like, infiltrate a country, <laughs> you could just eat, like, cans of beans all day and solve the problem. You know? <laughs> oh, gosh, I can just see it now. The United States sending its whole army over to China, feeding everybody pork and beans and just have. <laughs> But what about our men? They'd be farting themselves out of the equation too, you know. Well, they would have. They would take like special like antidote, like shots, so they would be, <laughs> they would be immune. You know what I mean? Of course, the problem is you would have newscasters trying to do it. Like, <laughs> now we are live from China, and now right, at, at all the sound, right? So. <laughs> The new army secret weapon. <laughs> Where did you get this? Google, Google it, Yahoo it. You'll see the dinosaurs. I am not making this up. <laughs> well, um, you know, the National Enquirer has a website, too. And because it's in print, everything is true. Naturally. <laughs> this is a respective website. You look it up. You tell me once, you know, maybe next week or whatever. <laughs> Folks, we will do a follow-up to this. Maybe we can test this theory. I'm not sure how, but... Uh, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, just just uh, light up a cigarette lighter and fart and see what happens. Uh, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, do, I do not want to uh, um, light up my life. But yeah, but, yeah. but but yeah, I mean, I could see that happening, you know, if there's all this flagellants floating up in the air and that sort of thing, and you know, you get some solar flare from the sun that ignites it. But that would have to be I some dinosaur. serious uh, <laughs> anal activity, my God. <laughs> well, look. Well, you see, them dinosaurs was eating each other up and everything, and getting a lot of gas and everything, and yeah. <laughs> I guess they had very satisfying meals. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, folks, I, that's all that I have. Spatchy, what else do you have? <laughs> uh, can I go home now? <laughs> uh, yes, you can go home and stop buying those beans, will you? <laughs> folks, that's it for this uh, another uh, stellar <laughs> sinner <laughs> part with Spatchy and the Dinosaurs. Hey, that sounds like a new cartoon series, Spatchy and the Dinosaurs. Anyway. Uh, I, I don't think so. I don't think so either. So uh, yeah, I think we'll. Leave, I think that's enough of the flatulent jokes. But uh, <laughs> uh, Spatchy, this was fun. Yeah, so, as always, and I, I just love doing these shows. You know? Yeah, it's uh, you know we we, we <laughs> have to do one of these. The next Linux A team. Let's do an expanded center with reported with the Linux A and everybody. Oh. Oh my goodness! Uh, well, we, well, that would either turn out really well, or we could ha- open up a serious can of worms with that one. Well, I mean, as long as we keep the conversations um, clean without any gases, I think it'll be okay, you know. But yeah, but, yeah, don't let don't get me started on the beefy miracle again. Uh, I said, excuse <laughs> me, excuse me. I said clean. <laughs> you know, it's wash, like, rinse, repeat through three times. Yeah. Okay. I was actually talking about that at work, and uh, my coworkers thought that was hilarious. Really? Yeah, with the hot dog and uh, and uh, what I thought should be with the hot dog in the picture. Uh, okay, okay, okay. They, yeah, they I thought think. that was kind of cool. <laughs> well, folks, on that note, thank you. On behalf of myself and, of course, my good friend Spatry, we will catch you on the next week, Sinner. Report. Goodbye. Take care.